is something very special. And not only is this a live show, listen. Absolutely awesome to hear them vocalize. And she's already missing her pride. They're such social cats. Well, maybe it's that she's calling them and she wants to head off and take the rest of the pride with her. The kill could well be done by now. As I was saying, it's not only a live safari, but it's also interactive. And if you'd like to ask us questions, please do so. You can hashtag Safari Live on Twitter or send an email through to questions at wildearth.tv. This lioness is approaching an elephant. So let's get ready for a bit of action. It's impossible for a lioness on her own to catch an elephant. In big prides, they do have small chances of doing so. I doubt this would be her intentions. She's just going to want to get past as easily as possible. Lee, 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 come in for Diana. Now the elephant's probably about 30 feet away, but continuing towards the lion now, slowly feeding. It's the same elephant that did chase this lioness earlier. And it appears like she's going to take a path with more cover to try and avoid any trouble with the elephants. Elephant is nervous. Anne in Seattle is interested to know whether those vocalizations we just heard was possibly this lioness looking for the large males who we were tracking this morning. And I don't think so, Anne. Um, it would have just been a contact call back to the rest of, of the pride. In order for her to communicate with those lions, she would have had to roar much louder than that, and that was simply her just communicating, I think, with the rest of the pride. She is heading back there, and I'd like to try and be there when she does join up with them, because there'll be some and body length. This might be better from here. There's the affection. So the young males come down. Absolutely awesome. interested to know how much longer this young male is going to be tolerated in the area. He certainly is becoming sexually more inquisitive, and his fathers are therefore going to become less tolerant of his presence. And it could be in the next few months that we notice a shift in the relationship between the men of this pride, the father and the son.
this is normal and the necessity to cause young males to move large distances away from their families in order to carry fresh genes into new areas. Now there is a decent visual of a hippo in this dam now. It looks to me like it could be a bull, judging from the size of its head and neck, but I'm not certain. There were hippos here the other day, I believe, or at least one hippo, which Brent seemed to think could have been the female or mother of the young hippo that was killed. It certainly could still be the case. And she could be hanging around you hoping that her calf will appear at some stage and is maybe mourning that death or hoping that the calf is still nearby. It's hard to say. The reason why I think it could be a bull is the combination of the size of its head as well as the fact that it's here alone. The females often will join up with other females and form pods. And you often see females together in, in dams, whereas males can be more solitary. I think what we should do is reposition. We're a little bit far from the action here. We are Welcome back, and apologies for that short break up in signal. And? Vim. What's your name? Billy. Oh, hello, Billy. Billy. Hello, everyone. Cool. Bengano just there, but the bamba was this side. Yeah, I saw that. Okay. somewhere in here, but it'll be really interesting to see how much of it's left. I can see another lion heading away from the kill. Oh, look at this. A hooded vulture slinking for not only scraps, but also the feces of the lion that they will feed on. It really is bizarre to think what some animals eat and enjoy eating. And lion feces would probably be the last thing on earth I would like to eat. Yet this bird loves it. Wouldn't it be nice if we could find some... Or find a shot of it actually feeding on it. That's what it's looking for now. It can feed on remains of the carcass. But as you'll notice, it's got a very thin and delicate bill. The most small and delicate of all of the vultures in this area. Interesting enough, we can see the remains of the jaw of the hippo here. It's, uh, I think possibly, I can't tell whether it's the bottom or the, or the top jaw. But we'll keep looking around. I've completely taken this carcass to pieces. And I think we've established enough now that the meat here is finished. So Maina could still come in here and have some fun. But the carcass has been torn into a million little pieces. sign of any skin I believe there's a lot of the thick hide in the area yesterday this is the first time I'm coming here 
there doesn't appear to be any hide or skin. There's just a few bones scattered about all over the show. There's not more vultures here. Oh, well, here's some more lions. So let's see where, what's going on here. I think they could just be relaxing in the shade. Yeah. Or no? Yeah, they, no, I think they may have... Oh, here's the skin. So this little cub is... There we go. There's the hippo hide. That this little cub is playing with. I'm going to try and see if we can... Oof, it's going to be difficult to get in there. But there's the large piece of, of skin that's obviously too thick and chewy for the lions to process. But that cub's just playing around, and the cubs will get the least food. Even at kills like this where there's an enormous amount of meat, the cubs will be the ones that get access to the lesser cuts or the non-prime cuts and therefore that is why it's probably still trying to gorge itself on whatever leftovers it can find. I think our best option is to go and sit with the lines that are at the water hole. I could see another two back where we were at the remains of the carcass. So there must have just been another one behind the bushes back there that we couldn't see. What you can see, though, is that they are full-bellied and very, very relaxed. They've been here for just over 48 hours now. And a very successful hunting operation has allowed them to feast for days. It's uncommon for a lion to catch and kill hippo, even small ones, because their parents will often try and defend them, and an adult hippo is a force to be reckoned with. fairly certain they're going to spend the whole day here relaxing in the shade and only later on this evening can we expect them to probably move off I wonder where they will move from here we are on our northeastern corner of our property so they don't have to move far in order to be out of our property if they do head either north or east which is what I'm guessing they're going to do. Hopefully they prove me wrong and come to the south, deeper into Juma. Either way, though, we certainly have got our fix of lion sightings over the last 48 hours. And a welcome relief. It had been a while since we had had some quality lion sightings. And... And if and when they do move off, it'll give us some time to focus on another apex predator, the leopard, who've also been eluding us yesterday. We had a great sighting of Mvula, a dominant male, yesterday, but other than that, we've been battling with the leopards. Thankfully, though, Archer, there's always something to look at, and even though there's ups and downs, there's... Always some great stuff going on on the property. <coughs> well, 
what is this one line scene here? I think it may have seen a terrapin. Something's got its attention on the water's edge there. seem to see anything it's looking very intently at something on the water's edge wouldn't it be wonderful if it pounced on something even if it was a slippery terrapin Question from Ramey, and thanks Ramey for your question. Ramey's asking whether vultures are edible to lions, and I've never actually seen or heard of a lion eating a vulture, but they will certainly try and catch and kill them and chase them away from their kills. Once they have caught and killed them, it wouldn't be hugely surprising for a lion to feed on a vulture though. There's no reason why they shouldn't or wouldn't, and a lion, even when they kill other predators or even other lions, occasionally feed on them. So a lot does depend on the individual lions and scenario, but what I found is often written in textbooks is that predators will not feed on other predators. They'll simply kill them for competition. That is not always the case. Quite often, actually, I've seen predators feeding on other predators, even if it is the same species that they've killed. And a lion then feeding on a vulture would fall into that same category, I guess. It certainly would be a funny thing to see a lion trying to pluck the feathers of a vulture because you can imagine all of the feathers getting stuck in the lion's mouth. It happens more often with leopard who can catch birds with a little bit more ease than lion. But in all my time I've seen lion chase vultures very often but never managed to actually catch one. Just got an interesting question through from Dennis in Spain. And he wants to know which animal have we not seen ever being killed by a predator? And basically, there is no animal in Africa that I can think of that has not fallen prey to mainly lion, I guess, as they are capable of catching the larger animals like elephants, like rhino, like hippo. So those would be probably the three most difficult animals to take down for lion. Other interesting animals like catfish and birds can also be hunted by leopard. So there's basically nothing that's completely safe in Africa from the predators. Even though it's highly uncommon for lions to take down elephants, it does happen and can happen. The lioness with her head up has seen some Inyala approaching the waterhole. Now, with a full belly, I'm going to be inclined to think that if they do have an attempted hunt, it's going to be half-hearted. But another one's also just picked up a head. It means two of them are interested, which is great. 
there is, however, a large body of water between where the lions are and where the Inyala are coming down to drink. And as VM pans out, you will soon realize that it's going to be a very difficult feat for these lions. Yeah, I'm on my way again. Uh, you anything else? No, but uh, probably now. So, the peninsula up towards the left of the shots is where you can see the Inyala coming down to drink now. If the lions weren't full bellied, it would be a very, very different scenario. But the fact that they are <laughs> makes me think that they are simply going to look from afar. Hopefully they prove me wrong. It is important to understand that most predators or all predators are highly opportunistic. It's very difficult for them to catch their prey. Therefore, even when they are full bedded, if they get given another opportunity to hunt, they will take that opportunity. But now I'm heading west with the fabric. And I know from the lie of the land where those in Yala are going to drink that there's a lot of work for these lions still to do, but they are getting up. I just get another bella west of the dam, then I took that one. And they might actually provide us with a bit of excitement. I'm just going to have to try and get into a slightly better position because if and when something does happen, we are not going to be able to see it from here. going on but they sure they surely should soon get an understanding that there is a potential hunt on the cards here and the more of them that get involved the increase the more likely it is that there will be a chance of them catching one they rely on hunting in a pack we're going to go through a dip again so the signal might cut off but we have to get onto that side of the dam if we need to see any action so bear with us the signal could break but it'll come back as soon as we get through this dip of something actually happening here. But we are certainly going to get ourselves into a position where if in fact something does happen, at least we can see it. still three remaining there there's one up to the right in the shade that I can see the other one and there's one missing could be very close to that other lioness and the Anyala are somewhere to our right up on this peninsula over here we can't see them from where we are but the lion are all the way across there. There's a body of water between them and the Inyala. So not easy prospects, but they are still showing interest. And if anything, they could be getting themselves into a position where if the Inyala continue to head towards them, they'll be ready to ambush them. They cannot resist. Uh, here come the Anyala here. They're already making their way their way away from the water. So they've managed to sneak in and sneak out without the lions even getting a chance to try and catch them. So a lucky day for the Anyala. 
And you'll notice that they don't waste any time around the water hole. They came here, did what they needed to do, and are now making their way out on that exact same pathway. Which again is clever because they know it's a safe route. They've accessed the dam from this point and now are exiting the dam from the same point rather than walking around the dam, increasing their chances of being ambushed. The lion, as you can see, are just watching from afar. That was exciting, the potential chance of a hunt. It's something that we see so seldomly. A lot of the hunting happens when we are not around or in thick vegetation where we may not be able to see exactly what happens. So the prospects of seeing these predators in action is always an exciting one. It's not that I've got any desire for there to be less in Yala around, but to see them hunting is something that I think is really awesome and something that sadly we don't get to see very often. There's a battalure soaring above the lines. I wonder if it's going to be able to find the hippo carcass. It shouldn't be hard and it is very close by. It'll be really cool if we manage to see it actually lock targets and come down and start feeding on the leftovers. They do feed on carrion battalions. And I have been giving lessons as to how to differentiate between male and female battalions. So why don't you, the audience, let me know whether this is a male or a female. I know a lot of you will already know the answer to this, but there's new viewers that join every day. And this question goes out to the newcomers. Just got a question through from Jody in New Mexico. Thanks for this question. Jody would like to know if lions can kill crocodiles. And yes, they certainly can. And I haven't seen it personally, but I have seen footage of lions catching and killing crocodiles and feeding on them. I've also seen footage of leopard catching and killing crocodiles and eating them. But believe it or not, I've also heard of a story, and it's true, of a crocodile catching and killing a fully grown male lion that was drinking at a dam in his prime. Crocodiles can get absolutely huge, over 20 feet in length, and probably twice the weight of a big male lion. So those monster crocs will have no probably problem feeding on even the biggest of male lions. And size matters out here. Small crocodiles, and I'm saying a baby crocodile, will be fed on by a host of different predators. But as that crocodile becomes bigger, it's going to have less and less opponents. also depends on the specific scenario. If we think of this dam, for example, there's been a relatively large crocodile that inhabited this dam for a couple of weeks. But then when that crocodile needs to move from this dam to another dam, it's going to be very vulnerable, traveling over land large distances. And it's then, when it doesn't have the safety and retreats of the water, that 
behind may potentially be the ones who have a better chance of killing it. Whereas when it's in the water and it's got that element of surprise and ambush, it can catch even and kill even the biggest of predators out here. I'm sure a number of leopard have also been gobbled up over the years. Good question, man. A nice one because it, 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 it helps understand that different scenarios and different situations will, will lead to different outcomes, even though the same animals may be involved in the different scenarios, the outcomes will differ greatly. Okay, well, well done to Virginia on Twitter. You were the first person to send in the correct answer for the battle of eagle flying around, or the gender of that eagle, and it is, in fact, a female. You would have noticed that she had a very white strip underneath her wings, and this is indicative of the female. The males will have half black and half white, and... The good news is, is VM, I'm going to ask you to, sh to just pan up quickly. There's another Batsalur flying around, and it's a male. So you'll be able to see the difference between male and female. The initial one was a female with predominantly white under the wings, and this one you'll notice is half black, half white. We'll just wait for it to do one more circle, and then you'll be able to see more clearly. There we go. So within just a few minutes, we've been able to see both a male and a female, and that's just awesome. They sadly haven't been able to see the hippo carcass, which maybe they have. I'm guessing they must have, and maybe they've decided against it. But I do know that there is more food available for them there. Obviously, with their little beaks, they can get access between the bones and cartilage of where the lions could not feed on. But they don't seem to be too interested in the leftovers of this hippo. from the Gold Coast has noticed all these bubbles and ripples bubbling up on the surface of this water hole and a lot of this is caused by a combination of fish and terrapins that are moving under the surface of the water but causing these small bubbles and ripples there's different types of fish that live in here. Some are quite small and some are quite big. The smaller fish are the tilapia that I've seen cormorants feeding on. It's a water hunting bird. As well as catfish, I've seen catfish poking their whiskers out of this dam. So a host of different animals. It can also often just be changes in oxygen levels in the water hole and in the soil below. And these sometimes bubble up very slowly from the bottom of the waterhole. Well, I think it's fair to say that these lion are only going to move in order to stay in the shade today. They'll probably be in a slightly different position this afternoon as, as the sun moves from east to west, they are going to be forced to shuffle around and stay in a shady spot. 
But it's great prospects for this afternoon's drive, though, because I am 99% certain they will still be here. And that's really good news. The other good news is I'm hoping that we'll have two vehicles out this afternoon, and that way we can divide and conquer. It's all peaceful and calm here at Pufflesuk Dam, so I think we should see if we can find anything in the last 15 minutes. asking why the water in this dam is so green and I think a lot of that may simply be from the reflection of the green foliage outside the dam. It's actually very brown and muddy and that's from the amounts of animals coming through here churning up the mud. And there's a little bit of algae in one section of the dam so that could be a factor. Go through this dip, we could lose signal, but hopefully we don't. And as we pop out the other side, it should stabilize. successful with and figures I've heard thrown out are between 10 and 20 percent of attempted hunts ended up, end up in success and I couldn't agree more with that. I've seen countless hunts of both lion and leopard and 80 to 90 percent of the time it's a failure. So depend on the individual leopard or the individual pride of lion but on average it's a very low success rate and that does make sense the prey animals have learned over many many years to avoid being eaten and that's why they're still around those which didn't learn to avoid being eaten by lion are no longer here so it's equal evolution that have the lions to develop to a point where they can catch enough prey to survive but also the prey to be able to escape the lions otherwise the lions will just be big fat fur balls that don't have a tricky job and there's nothing easy about being out here in nature even for the lions they have their hardships and getting food is one of them Updated. Brent has been searching and scouring the area, hoping to find these two male lions that took me around in circles for the first part of this morning's drive. And he also hasn't had any luck, so who knows what they could have done, but 
We certainly will not forget about them and try our best to find them this evening. It'll be great if we could have two lion sightings this evening, one that's already established. up and signal. to a low-lying area where I knew the signal would be bad, but if there was an animal there, it would certainly make sense for us to try and at least get a glimpse of it and establish what's going on. There didn't appear to be anything there, although I didn't spend too much time snooping around because I wanted to try and rush back to a signal area. And just a couple of minutes left, we are approaching Gari Dam. So it'll be interesting to see who's there or who's on their way there. And for those of you that have been watching for the whole drive, you'll know that it's been a tricky one. It started off of driving around and not many animals and apologies for that i just got caught up in trying to find these male lions that were literally on our doorstep this morning and have somehow managed to evade us but really happy that we arrived at the kohuma pride when we did we got some great action of an ellie chasing the one lioness and then even just seeing all the pride members lying up around the waterhole it was a beautiful setting also interesting to see how that actually dismembered that hippo carcass and even the top and bottom jaw had been disconnected. So they're going to be looking for another meal, possibly even tonight, but I think they certainly will be there this afternoon. So almost guaranteed lion viewing. That's good news. There are probably these two males hiding somewhere on our property, and hopefully we'll be able to find them. There haven't been any leopard tracks that I saw this morning, any fresh leopard tracks. That's not to say there's no leopard around, but we've got no idea of where they're moving, if they are on the property. Anyway, we will find out this afternoon but there are good prospects and thanks very much to all of you for joining in thanks to VM on camera and to Nikki and Tara in final control and we will spend the last minute or so with a view of this buffalo bull approaching the water hole we're just going to park up on the damn wall and we will see you all this afternoon for the next adventure